Good morning and welcome to Sunday the 14th of March. On the first day of the third month after the Israelites left Egypt, on that very day, they came to the desert of Sinai. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, on what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did in Egypt, and how I carried you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully, and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites." So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, We will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answers back to the Lord. And God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or on the waters below. You shall not bow down to them, or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, 
punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that in them is, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honour your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbour, you shall not covet your neighbour's house, you shall not covet your neighbour's wife, nor his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbour. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent, and it's also the day marked as Mothering Sunday. Traditionally, this Sunday was to do with Mother Church, when people would return to their Mother Church for a special service, and even domestic servants were given the day off to go to church and to see their family. It's only recently that Mothering Sunday has twisted and changed into Mother's Day, a day to remember mothers. But I know for many people that is difficult. It's difficult for those who have never been a mother. It's a time of sadness for those whose mothers have died. It's complex for people who have a difficult relationship with their mum. And this year, I think it's even tougher with the enforced restrictions on families. I know there are many people who have not seen their parents or mothers who've not seen their children for many months or for even over a year now. A day that used to be a day of celebration and joy for so many people now just seems odd and slightly sad this year. But for me, I've always taken this day as being for something slightly different. A day not just to celebrate mothers, but to honour any woman who has had a profound impact on my life. Most of us will know of someone who was a mother figure to them, yet wasn't their natural parent. We'll know the love we received from them the kindness they shared with us, the wisdom and knowledge they passed to us. I wonder who those types of people might be for you. Our Bible reading today, the next part of Exodus, contains possibly the most famous set of words in the Bible. It's possibly not too strong a claim to say that they're a leading contender for the most famous set of words in human history. We are of course talking about the Ten Commandments. They form the core of a covenant, a legally and spiritually binding agreement between the Jewish people and God. As God takes his people away from slavery and into the new promised land, this was, for want of better words, a tenancy agreement between God and his people. And these Ten Commandments split into two parts. The first three of these commandments concern how the people should relate to God. He is their creator, he's their redeemer, and they're to fully respect and love him 
and follow him to the exclusion of others. And they mean the same to us as well. We have God who is our creator and our redeemer, and we need to place him above everything else in our lives. The fourth commandment is a bridge between these two sections, God and society. We're to take time, the fourth commandment says, to enjoy and marvel at God's creation. The Sabbath is set apart to connect us with God and connect us with other people. And the beauty of this commandment was that no one was excluded from the commandment to rest. Even foreigners, servants and livestock were called to take a break from work on the Sabbath. It was to be a blessing for all creation. And it's a commandment that is revolutionary in its thinking. The next six commandments set out as the ground rules for how people should respect one another and through doing that build a healthy society. Most of them are pretty obvious in what they mean. But let's think about the fifth commandment. Honour your father and your mother, so you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. It can often be seen as a command to try and control younger people, to tell them to pee in their place. But actually, this is a double-sided commandment. The unspoken part is the need for parents. And I think it's reasonable to extend it to those who are older within a community to set a godly example. The Jewish people were continually told that if they kept the commandments, they would live long in the land. Conversely, they were also told that if they disobeyed the commandments and continually broke them and walked away from God, well, they would not be allowed to live in that land. They had to live these godly lives, lives rooted on God and his promises and his commandments. And parents are their children's first teachers. Children learn to honour their parents by seeing their parents honour God and his commandments. This fifth commandment is not just about children blindly honouring their father and mother and those older than them. It is also imperative within it that parents and older people set that godly example to those that come after them. But let's think again about those people in your lives who set that good example to you, those surrogate mothers. How is it that you honour them in the way that you live? Do you show love to others in the way that you yourself were shown love? And maybe more crucially, what example are you now passing down to others and how are you enabling people younger than yourself to honour God? So, today, however you choose to mark this day or not mark it, may you honour God in the way that you live. May the godly example of those who came before you live and shine bright in your heart, and may your own acts of love, kindness, justice and peace inspire those who are to come after you to walk in the light of Christ all the days of their lives. Amen.
everlasting God, as your Son, Jesus Christ, showed his love on the cross in his compassion for his mother and his sacrifice for all, may we know what it is to love and be loved in words and in actions. We give you thanks for our church family and pray that all may find in her their true home, that the lonely, the marginalised, the rejected may be welcomed and loved in the name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, as we see the brokenness of our world, we pray for healing among the nations, for food where, is, where there is hunger, for freedom where there is oppression, for joy where there is pain, that your love may bring peace to all your children. We especially pray for all mothers who have to raise their children in places where there is war, famine, terrorism and great uncertainty, for mothers who have to flee conflict to a different country or are far from their homes and their relatives, for mothers who have been unable to meet with their children because of coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have given us the right to be called children of God. Help us to show your love in our homes, that there may be places of love, security and truth. Your son was born into the family of Mary and Joseph. Bless all parents and all who care for children. Strengthen those families living under stress and may your love be known where no human love is found. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we remember that as we celebrate Mothering Sunday today, there are those who do not share our happiness. Those who are sick, those who are sad, those who are lonely, those who are separated from their families, and those who live in families where there is little joy. We raise before you now those who need healing in their lives and give you thanks where healing has taken place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as we go out into the coming week, may we reflect your love for us in our families, our church and our community so that the world can see that we are followers of your Son, Jesus Christ, and draw others into his loving care. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of Perfect submission, perfect.
perfect delight Visions of rapture burst on my sight Angels descending bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story Well, thank you for joining me today for our service. Let me finish with a blessing. May God bless us, that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline, gentleness and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and those whom we love now and forevermore. Amen. So from me to you, take care and God bless.